Back in our media day coverage and next off it's to Dallas. The Mavericks were a 42 win team last year. Good for a sixth seed in the Western Conference before losing out in five games to the Oklahoma City Thunder. But in comes Harrison Barnes on a $94 million deal to pair up with Dirk Nowitzki still at it and now number six on the NBA's all time scoring list. And he spoke with our Vince Cellini. It is a pleasure to spend some time with the sixth leading scorer all time in NBA history entering his 19th season all with the Dallas Mavericks the one and only Dirk Nowitzki wow 19 years and, and, and Dirk you're coming off a very productive year your numbers actually went up 18.3 a game and somehow you and Carlisle continue to find ways to to make you effective that you're going to do that again this year I assume yeah, it's going to get harder and harder <laughs> but uh no, we're we're trying. I mean, uh, we're we usually my teammates try to put me in good positions to where I only have to catch and shoot or make quick plays, or if it's not there, to swing the ball, let the other guys make a play. And I'm just out there, you know, you know, just help help the guys, spread the floor, uh, get some timely baskets here and there, and, and help us win as many games as uh, as I can. And you know, my goal obviously the last few years is to play efficient, play effective. Uh, my last few years, and hopefully uh, have some fun and win some games. The question is, will there be a 20th year in the offseason you signed a two-year deal for 50? And I you know you have an option to return or, or not return. What will ultimately, do you believe, decide that issue for you moving forward? Well, I, I signed a two-year deal because I obviously want to play for two more. I would love to get to 20 years uh, in, with one franchise. It'll be, it'll be an, an unbelievable, great achievement. So that's what I'm working on, but you know I don't want to get ahead of myself. You know I want to play this year, see how I feel, see how the body feels, uh, see how many games I can play, uh, and and how the body responds because you know the recovery between games gets gets harder and harder. So we'll just have to wait and see. And uh, next summer I'll I'll make that decision. But in in my head I do want to play it out two more years, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, Dirk, it's uh, it's great that you're one of the few guys to spend his entire career with one franchise. But uh, I, I think. We can talk about this now. Was there ever a time where you ever close to going anywhere else throughout your career? Well, you know, the only time I would have thought about it was if we wouldn't have won the championship. You know, that, that was always the goal, to win the championship, bring one here to Dallas, bring another one to these fans, this organization. And um, so we were close in 06, and, uh, and we didn't make it. And then we, we always tried it and tried it. And, um, but... You know, we, we always gave it our best. Cubes and, and Donnie always put teams out there that, that could compete and, uh, and, and play at the highest level. And, and finally, in, in, in 2011, we broke through. So I'm, I'm glad I stuck with it. And it was uh, all the hard work we put in and kind of paid off that year. And uh, that, was, that was, I'll never forget that year for the rest of my career. And uh, since then, uh, we're, still, we're still chasing, uh, obviously, to get back there again. But it's, it's, been a, it's been a little harder the last few years. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what kind of team we got this year and then see how far we can go. Yeah, and, and the Mavericks never stand still, and, and they didn't again. So you bring in a couple of guys from a 73-win team in uh, Golden State and Harrison Barnes and Andrew Bogut. And I'm just wondering what those guys you see uh, bring to the table and how they're, they're going to be configured and fit into the plans of the Mavericks. Well, I think free agency started off a little slow there. Okay, day one and day two, all these guys were interested in Batum and here and there, uh, everybody left. And then uh, I think we got a little fortunate with, with KD going to uh, Golden State. Uh, they, they didn't have room for, for Bogan and, and Barnes, and uh, we, were, we were fortunate to get them. And both, you know, played a championship experience. They're, they're great team players. Um, both should be fun to play with. Um, and they're, they're great system players. They're great guys off the court. So we're we're looking forward to get this thing started. I think Bogues is a, is a smart player, veteran player, and a, an experienced player that knows how to pass, know how to protect the rim, and, and those things are very important. And and Harrison, I think we we just want him to grow. We want him to develop. We we feel like sky's the limit for him. Uh, he's a workhorse. He's in the gym morning, nights, trying to get better, work on his game. Uh, we wanted to play an all-around game. We wanted to run some pick and rolls. We wanted to post up, one spot up. We wanted to cut. So we want, to, uh, we want him to grow in the in the in our great great players. So I'm I'm here or we're here to help him do that and uh, and take a lot of burden off his off his shoulders. Yeah, and while you have veteran players like yourself, uh, Dirk, you also have this influx 
of younger athletic players like Justin Anderson and Dwight Powell along with Barnes and and that has to be exciting too because those you, you see those guys giving you a real change of pace do you not yeah I think uh, we should be able to to play some some faster style with some of our bench guys who are really fun to watch and, and athletic and you know, I say it all the time in this league, you can't have enough shooters and you can't have enough athletes these days. You know, almost all teams have, have a smaller lineup where we basically switch everything and, uh, and, and interrupt the, the other offense. So I think we're going to have a, a team like that as well. They can go up and down, they can guard, uh, they can be athletic and uh, that should be, should be fun to watch. And, and then we have some lineups maybe where we're a little slower and we play a little more methodical and uh, play a little more pay, uh, playoff basketball. and. Um, so I think we, we can go a few styles, and I'm looking forward to getting this thing going. Yeah, and it's another year uh, in the backcourt with Darren Williams and Wesley Matthews as well, and, and the guy I call the little pest, uh, J.J. Berea, also thrown in the mix there. So uh, given all of these components that we've talked about, Dirk, and you've seen a lot of basketball, uh, realistically, wh where can you see the expectations of this Dallas Mavericks team in, in the Western Conference? Well, we always pride ourselves on making the playoffs, and and you know in the in the in the Western Conference it's going to be really really tough. As we know, we we went down the wire for us again last year. We finished like really great the last nine ten games to get in, and um, so we're going to be in a fight again. But um, hopefully, Darren can stay healthy for us this year. You know, we had some issues down the stretch, and at times last year we felt like he was our best player. He was our best player in crunch time. We ran the, the big plays for him. Um, and West looks incredible. I got to say, he came of a major surgery uh, the year before, and uh, he didn't move as great. But he was in the gym starting in May already. He told me two or three times he lost some weight. He looks more explosive. Uh, he's looking to uh, to be aggressive and, and have a bounce back year or a great year. So uh, we're excited, but obviously so are all the other teams. But we'll we'll, we'll wait and see how it goes. But uh, we're we're fired up. Yeah, and Dirk, you're back, uh, a superstar returning for a 19th season, but now uh, it's going to be a little different this year going against the Spurs and the Lakers and the Wolves without the likes of Duncan and Kobe and Garnett. And have you had time to think about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, the league lost some, some great, great players, some of the greatest that, that ever played the game, uh, what they've done on and off the floor for, for, for this league, for our sport was tremendous and uh the league's definitely gonna gonna miss them and uh it's been an honor for me you know to, to, to watch them some growing up and then competing against them for for a long long time had some great battles with all of them and it's been uh I have nothing but respect for obviously for for all three of them and uh i wish them uh, obviously well for for their life after basketball and uh, they were all they were all amazing and great competitors and great players and uh, shared a lot of great times with him. Yeah, and my last question kind of plays to your sense of humor and your self-deprecating humor as well. Uh, earlier this month in a, a recent national publication, uh, in, in describing you, they said, uh, quote, that you were running like you're stuck in cement. But rather than getting upset about that, I thought you had the perfect response via social media. Can, can you share, with that, share that with us once again? Oh man, I think I, th I said a few things, but one of them was uh, that I've always ran in cement my entire career. I mean, it's not like I was ever athletic. Uh, obviously, once you get older, you do lose a little step, but you try to make it up with uh, with experience. And uh, and you know, then I also said I used to run in quicksand. Now it's full on cement. <laughs> uh, but you know, just uh, social media to me is is more about having fun and interacting with uh with your fans and your haters and it's been uh it's been a great platform for me yeah dirk so much fun to spend time with you and, and to continue to watch you play best of luck this year with the dallas mavericks and, and moving forward thank you okay thanks Vince.